very much welcome everybody. Nice to see you crowded here. Yesterday was a very interesting day. There was a lot of talk about the precision medicine and John Wilbanks referred about the uh, accuracy of the measurement and how to use the information or data in order to uh, further uh, analyze that and further develop. So I'm talking about the transforming digital health into the smart care. What does it mean? How it used in the practice? So we are a Finnish forerunner in the health technology segment. We've been operating two decades and uh, developed in very early steps related to the uh, measurement of the activity of the people. So what is everything and all about the well-being? It's actually something that is affecting all of us and it's very important during all of our lives. And especially it becomes interesting and important when we get older or if we get sick. And it is not just how active we are, it's like how well we can recover, how well we sleep, uh, how uh, our physical activity level is, how sporty we are, but on the other hand, it's not just about that. It's about the health status. And for example, if you have the chronic illnesses and you need to use the medication in order to treat your treatment path, it's, everything is affecting. Also, our emotions are affecting. So if I have the worries, if I have the stress, it means that I cannot recover so well and also, uh, I have the issues with the sleep. And uh, also, the hydration and nutrition is naturally affecting all of us. Here is two different cases that where the well-being measurement and health status measurement is very important. One is about the Lisa. He's old woman and he ha she has memory illness, meaning that she's not anymore very active in her life, and uh, she has issues also with the sleeping. So she's sleeping at the daytime, and uh, actually she's uh, condition is getting worse, meaning basically that uh, he has much, much higher risk of accidents, and falling down at her home. And with this case, it is very important to look at what to do. So many times it's been the answer has been that, okay, she needs to have the uh, services at the nursing home and she cannot anymore cover at home. But basically using real-time monitoring of she's activity uh, sleeping, we can see what is wrong and give the uh, care, change the medication, uh, increase the activity at the daytime, and actually change the situation at home. And this basically means that she can continue living at her home, so she's condition is getting better. And naturally, the second thing is that she's relatives has been very, very worried about the situation. So they can also see the situation online, react, and uh, uh, have a peace of mind that everything is okay. Then we have a second case here, which is 62-year-old man, which is actually working life, and actually he, she, he get stroke during the day, uh, day at work. And basically, this means that he went to hospital for the acute care. And during the rehabilitation, he had issues with the pain and with the medication. So his activity was, uh, doctors was able to follow up the activity and the sleeping and change the medications based on the monitored information. 
And uh, when he went back at work, his condition and recovery can be follow up also in the occupational health with the monitoring system. So I'm really proud that this event actually for us is also a launch event. So we are launching a new medical device approved uh, solution called Vivaco Move. And we are monitoring uniquely the well-being, health status and safety with this solution. Uh, what we monitor is the health status, sleep, activity, but also up, we can follow up the physical functioning. And very interesting thing related to digital health is actually that the care will change from the reactive to preventive. Because we have the data online all the time, and uh, caregivers can react very fastly. So this is very remarkable change if you think about the digitalization of the health. And the nice thing is that it's, it's really the time that we are now living. If you think about our solution, how we do is that we have actually watch, and then the phone, and we send all the data to the cloud where we do the analytics. And the nice thing also is that we can share that information to the caregivers, to the medical doctors, as well as for the relatives and the person himself, if they allow, if she or he allows. So we can combine all the people who are concentrating all that people and the care of that people. And uh, we give the information as a notifications, so red, uh, yellow tax. So for the caregivers, it's very easy to work with this information and react fast. Uh, one important thing when we also are moving towards digital health is that everything is moving from like statistical normal measures to the individual measures. And one key thing with Vivaco system has been many years already is that we do the individualized analysis. So all the changes, all the um, remarks that we are giving is actually something that is individualized. You don't need to input persons a data about the weight or height or age or sex. Everything is based on your individual measurement and the changes. And our algorithms are adapting to those changes. Uh, what is key also is that we have the measurements have been clinically validated and we use as well as we can follow up the sleep and the circadian rhythm, so day-night rhythm, what we follow up is the physical functioning of that person. And the physical functioning means that how well you can manage your daily activities and normal daily uh, rhythms. So if your physical functioning is going bad, for example, it can mean that the elderly people cannot go anymore by themselves to the uh, toilet, or they cannot anymore eat by themselves. And the question is that how to help with this kind of situation. Then, about the digitalization of the health status information, there is very, very big benefits that we can achieve in the future. There was also already quite a much of talk about the uh, cost reduction. And those cost reductions are very remarkable. And yesterday there was talking about that we have in Finland 
3 million, million uh, issue with the um, uh, state uh, for the social uh, health and care uh, in our budget. And in order to completely change our care processes and at the same time starting to utilize personalized care information, this means that we can tackle that challenge. Basically, this means that people can stay longer at home. We can reduce the need of the acute care because with the preventive information, we can react before the person needs to go to the hospital. We can also have much, much faster rehabilitation from the hospital. We have one example, Pori Hospital in the um, west part of Finland, and they have moved completely, changed their care processes, and they are utilizing daily basis the monitored real-time information to look at which people need to have the care and they can react very fastly. The other very big benefit is actually very personalized. So this means that we will have much, much better personalized care in the future because the care can be tailored based on your own needs, your own status, own behavior. For example, some of us are uh, waking up very early at the days, five o'clock, four o'clock, and some of us like to sleep longer to the 10 o'clock and go sleep much longer. So that's like our normal own rhythm. And when you get older, you probably prefer that you can keep that rhythm, your normal rhythm. And that's possible when we have the information and the caregivers have the information, what is your normal rhythm? And then naturally the second thing is that all of us, we, the different medications affect differently because of our genes to our, um, how they affect to us. And in order to know that, we need to have personalized, real-time monitored data from us. And that helps actually to tailor the care path and treatment path individually for both of uh, us. So that's really a big, big benefit in the future. And this means that the care processes can be optimized completely differently. But naturally, this means that also the, how you organize the work needs to be also tailored differently. So, I'm very, very excited about the future because the transformation of the digital health means that we have huge opportunities in the future also to develop with the technical development our uh, solutions better and actually the care of every person better. So combination of smart uh, health data, sensor data, and using the predictive information, predictive algorithms, and uh, artificial intelligence gives us a massive opportunity to uh, develop in the future years our care for much, much better uh, condition even something that no one of us can really um, think. So that's why it's been very interesting days, uh, these two days to hear all these kind of new things that has been uh, shared with us. So as a Vivaco, we have uh, working from 1994 and we have the certified processes as a medical device company, and we have more than 80,000 Vivaco users daily. And as Ella said at the beginning, what we want to do is that 
people get right care in the right place at the right time. Thank you very much.